He wants our ultimate, come on, our ultimate sacrifice, our ultimate surrender. Everything is due to your name. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Come on, play it again. Father, we love you. Lord, we need you. We give you our life. Yes, we do. We adore you tonight, Jesus. We surrender everything that we have, everything that we are. Come on, all of us. Hallelujah. Sing our praise. Father, I love you. I need you. Father, I love you. I lay my life before Come on, tell him. I surrender. Over to you, oh Lord. You are No less. No less. Come on, all. I surrender. Yes, I surrender. To you, O oh Lord. Oh, everything I love you. Father, I love you. I need you. I need you. I give you my life. Lay my life Come on, I surrender. Sing it in. 
sacrifice you paid oh lord hallelujah i was so undeserving but i thank you for the price anyway god oh we thank you tonight we thank you for your blood lord thank you for your blood hallelujah come on let's sing it with thanksgiving in our hearts mm -hmm. i never knew death could be so sweet Never knew surrender could feel so free. I've never seen such meekness and majesty. Thank you, Lord. 
that the blood of Jesus was bled for me. I never knew death could be so sweet. I never knew surrender could feel so free. I've never seen such meanness, such majesty. Come on, can you thank him? That the blood of Jesus was bled for me. So now I see freedom for all of my days. It's only by the power of the cross I'm raised. Oh, and now I can sing freedom for all of my days. It's only by the power of the cross I'm raised. The King of glory rescued me. The King of glory rescued me. Come on, are you glad tonight that he rescued me? Come on, sing it again. The King of glory rescued me. The King of Glory poured out. King of glory poured out. Yes, you did. Lord, victorious. Victorious are we now. Come on, sing it again. How beautiful. How beautiful the blood flows. Come on, thank Him tonight. How merciful the love shows. Come on, He's a merciful Lord. your hands and thank you. Come on for his blood. Come on his pure blood, his untainted blood that'll wash my sins away, Lord. I never knew his nails could love unfold. I never knew his wounds would heal my soul. I've never seen such beauty and sorrow. Oh, that the blood of Jesus, it was bled for me. I never knew his nails could love unfold. Thank you, Lord. I never knew that his wounds, oh, they could heal my soul. I've never seen such beauty and sorrow. Oh, that the blood of Jesus, it was bled for me. So now I see. Freedom for all of my days. Come on, it's made possible through it. Only by the power of the cross I'm raised. Now I see freedom. Now I freedom Come on, true freedom. All of my days. Only through the blood of Jesus. Only by the power of the cross I'm Sweet again. Now I see freedom. Now I see freedom for all of my all days. Of my days. Oh. It's only by the power of Come on, can you say it one more time? So now I see freedom for all of my days. Come on, no more chains, Lord. Only by the power of the cross, I'm Come raised. on, sing the King. The King of glory rescued me. Come on, sing it. The King of glory rescued me. Come on, is he King in your life tonight? Tell him the King. The King of glory rescued me. But it did him. King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Me. Come on, sing Jesus rescue. Jesus rescued me. Come on, lift his name and sing Jesus. Jesus rescued me. Come on, it was the precious name of Jesus. Jesus rescued me. Come on, sing it one more time, Jesus. Jesus rescued me.
only part. So now I sing freedom.
Don't keep that good news to yourself. Say the King of Glory rescued me. I didn't get out on my own. He had to get me out. Oh, somebody praise him one more time. The King of Glory. Now put your hands together all over the room and give God another praise. Make it strong now. Make it strong. Be loud and proud about what God's done for you. Sunday night, we come in, you know, we don't feel pushed by time, right? Right, you know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some folks show up on Sunday Sunday just because they got a new outfit. They didn't come to praise God, they just come, you know, to be seen. But, uh, you know, you, listen, when you forego your, your sun, you break up your Sunday afternoon nap to roll up in church, you ain't playing. You ain't, you mean business when you come to church. That's what I like about the Sunday night folks. Tell somebody I mean business tonight. In fact, I mean I mean so much business, so much business. Until and, and I feel it's gonna be one of them, one of them, one of them kind. Just let me go ahead and tell you. I feel like I need to be like a stewardess right now, and I need to go ahead and tell you. These are he said. Keep the aisle clear. Make sure that your purse and luggage is stowed safely in the seat in front of you. Because I got a feeling somebody just might want to run a little tonight. Somebody might just want to hee-haw and ski out all right around this church. Oh, somebody somebody might let it, you know, the old church, I feel him in my hands, I feel him in my feet. I want this thing to get all over you tonight. Amen. And then when it gets on you, don't be like those folks that don't know what to do with it. Have you ever seen it get on people? They didn't know what to do with it. Oh, no, they, it's, they just know it feels good and I need to do something. And I just, I don't know what to do with it. Well, I'm going to tell you, when it gets on you like that tonight, run, shout, jump, hoop, holler, roll. Do something, do something with it. Don't just stand there and shake it around. Do something with it. Do, 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 say, amen. Say, amen. Lean over and tell your neighbor, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do something before I leave here tonight. I'm going to get radical in it tonight. In just a moment, I'm going to take you to the book of Daniel. And the reason I'm going to let you uh, be seated. Normally, I have you stand for the reading of the text. The reason I'm going to let you take your seat is I'm going to uh, I'm going to go through about 20 verses, and uh, yeah, ooh, and I'm going to preach on every one of them. Mess with me, I'll preach on the book of Daniel. So don't don't get don't get ooh on me too much. <laughs> oh my my, I, I, I studied to preach, man, amen. Hallelujah. Good to see Brother Divine, Sister Divine, with us here tonight. God bless you, tremendous ministers of the gospel.
pastors for many years, pastors of some of the most successful churches in this state. And good to see them. And good to see Brother Brandon Hope with us here tonight. Singing, playing somebody. My God. I, I'm going to tell you right now why I didn't let this boy sing tonight because if he had been singing, I wouldn't have got to preach a foot. I said, I would rather hear me preach than hear him sing. <laughs> I'm playing with you, man. I'm playing with you, man. I know you've got an anointing on you. You get on that keyboard and start singing. It's all she wrote. <laughs> and I'll have him, I'll, I'll sure have him back. Let him just take the, take the service if he wants to. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, for, we first got introduced to him when Brother Lowry came here been back ministered and we want to have him back again but I want to get right into right into this tonight Daniel chapter 1 verse number 1 I'm going to read quick so so beware of those that are working the screen in in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar now now every time I see Nebuchadnezzar it reminds me of the, of the guy that preached on the meanest man in the Bible he, he was preaching on Nebuchadnezzar but he called him Nebuch had a razor get it had a razor so that's why he's the meanest man okay y'all ain't worth two cents tonight Brandon come sing <laughs> oh so let me start over the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and besieged it and, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand part of the vessels of the house of God he carried it into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels of the treasure of the house of God you, you, you know later on there's going to be a hand that writes on the wall God said I didn't have no problem with you taking stuff but you took my stuff and you don't take my stuff and put it with your stuff especially my vessel I, I, see some of you need to, need to say amen right there because if, you vessel, if you're God's vessel he ain't going to let the devil be taking God's vessel and do what he wants with God's vessel because God will write on the wall and say it's over boy you, 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 listen you can touch the devil's crowd but you don't be touching mine hello ne next time the devil tries to put his hand on you you just let him I don't belong to you fool take your hand off me you can't no, uh, don't touch this uh, touch not mine anointed. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I ain't your vessel. That's another sermon. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz. <laughs> well, I think that one real good, didn't I? The master of the eunuch, and he, and he brings, watch this, certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed. Somebody say the king's seed. And of, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, well favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning, knowledge, understanding, and understanding science, and had ability. These were skillful individuals. And he wants them to stand in the king's palace, and he wants to teach them uh, the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision, daily provision of the king's meat and of wine, which he drank, okay, uh, so nourishing them for three years. And at the end, they were supposed to come and stand before the king. Now, now there are some of the king's kids, some of the king's seed, some of the princes, and their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And, and they, their names have been changed. Daniel is Belteshazzar. Hananiah is Shadrach. Mishael is Meshach. Azariah is Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. We've been talking about systems. So I want you to read this with the, with the understanding that Daniel is saying, I'm not changing God's system for your system. He said, I purpose in my heart, I'm not defiling myself, I'm not eating the king's meat, I'm not drinking the king's wine. And uh, he, he began to, to, to talk to the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And God had brought Daniel into favor, okay, with the prince of the eunuchs. The prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear the king. And, and he hath appointed your meat and your drink. Now when he sees you ain't doing this, I'm paraphrasing, I'm going to be in. The, I'm going to be in, in straits. I'm going to be the one in trouble because I'm supposed to make sure you eat his meat and drink his wine. And Daniel said to Melzar, who the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove your service. He said, "Let's let's just kick the tires on this. Let's let's try this thing out. Instead of making us do this for for three years, let's try this for ten days. For ten days, we're going to stay true to God's system." We're going to eat pulse, and we're going to drink water. 
then at, at the end of 10 days, come look on us. <laughs> at the end of 10 days, the countenance of the children that ate the portion of the king's meat, they looked one way, but you do, I want you to come and see if we don't look another way. And he consented after 10 days. Now I'm in verse number 15. And, and at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer, and they were... I ain't touching that one. <laughs> they should they should have eased up a little. <laughs> Just kidding. They they were fairer, fatter in flesh than those that stayed in the world system that ate the king's meat and drank the king's wine. And now he takes away the meat and the wine and gives them pulse and 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 for these four children, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Daniel has understanding in all visions and dreams. Watch how it accelerates. And at the end of the days, the king, he brings them in, and he realizes there's something different about these guys. Look, look, I'm going all the way to verse number 20. Because in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired, everywhere he questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the king's system. Did you catch it? They're ten times better than his magicians, soothsayers, and astrologers. When all is said and done, if we stay true to God's system, I promise you, at the end of it, I'm going to be better than this. I'm going somewhere. That's the message. I'm better than this. Find you three people and say, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. Oh, don't judge it yet because it ain't over. At the end, it will speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it. It will come and not tarry if I don't compromise, if I don't sell myself short, if I don't give up on God's system, and if I don't gravitate to the world system. When this contest is over, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to have more joy. I'm going to have more peace. Somebody shout, I'm better than this. So we're looking at two systems. They are opposite systems. There is the Hebrew system, then, or, or as the text would say, Judah. Judah means what? Judah means praise. So you see that the praisers have a system. God's people have a system. They are called the king's seed in the text. In, in other words, they are the king's kids. They have a system. They have a criteria. They have some conviction. They have a way of doing things. Yes, yes, yes. And then you see Babylon. Babylon represents the powers of darkness. It represents the worldly system. And they are at odds. There is a contest, watch, watch, a contest going on between the world system and God's system. And the world thinks that you've got to play by their rules to get ahead. But I come to tell you, I can play by their rules and fall behind. But if I play by God's rules, I will be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I will win in the end. And if I ain't winning, then the game can't be over. Somebody shout yes. So here we start in, in, in chapter number one, Daniel chapter one. Contest between two groups of people. Because Nebuchadnezzar is a narcissistic, arrogant, egocentric leader. It's his desire to create a master race of people, okay? And he brings the smartest, most intellectual, intelligent, most gifted, skillful people, and he brings them to his school. He wants to train them and educate them. In essence, he wants to indoctrinate them. Come on. He wants to inoculate them. His goal is to create... A, a, a setting and a culture that is going to be the envy of every other king and every other kingdom. He wants the best and he wants the Lord over the rest. And he has set his sights on some of God's people. We read about Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And one of the first things he does, he tries to brainwash them. Stay with me. 
He tries to erase. He wants to completely remove the system of God that heretofore they had been living in and raised under. How many of you follow me so far? He wants he wants to to delete. He wants to 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 recycle their their thinking. And his first step is to change their Hebrew names, right? So that he can he can remove any name that connects to them to Jehovah, connects them to their destiny. Oh my God! And he gives them Babylonian names: Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are not Hebrew names. Those are names that reflect a polytheistic belief and Nebuchadnezzar is trying to put his brand and his label, his stamp on the people of God. Are you with me so far? He wants them to forget about who they are and he wants to recondition them and reprogram them. You got to keep that in your mind as I preach tonight. And then he says, I am going to have you turn around and be teachers. I want you to perpetuate my philosophy and my ideals and my value system. There are two things that he does. He changes their name. But then number two, he has them to eat his meat and drink his wine. Now I know you're thinking that that is steak and ale. But it's a whole lot deeper than that. In the scripture, whenever you read of meat, you are reading of doctrine. Malachi bring tithe into the storehouse that there will be meat or doctrine or word in my house. Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. Paul said, get off the milk and onto the meat. So watch, it is not just the meat, but it's the wine. In Scripture, wine connects to spirit. Not just the spirit of God, but the spirit of the age. So Nebuchadnezzar is cunning, conniving, underhanded. He is feeding them meat and giving them wine because he wants them to eat his doctrine. Come on. And he wants to get them drunk on his way of doing things. Ah, He wants them to be drunk on the spirit of the age. But Daniel says, I'm not selling out. I am not compromising myself. Because if I eat meat, that meat has previously been offered to idols, and I would be in essence agreeing that there must be another God. So Daniel says, I'm not eating your meat, and I am not drinking your wine. Now Daniel has favor with the prince of the eunuchs. And he says, wait a minute. Before we get into this three-year-long process, let me show you that we don't need to change systems to be promoted. We, we don't need to change systems to rise. Oh, somebody say, I hear you. He says, let's try it for 10 days. Now, you know in, in the Bible, there is some sense to numerology, okay? Three, seven, 12, the number of foundations and governments. The number of 10 represents the whole. 10 times in Genesis, it reads, God said, okay? 10, 10, 10 commandments, right? 10 is the whole. The tithe is 10, 10 plagues, yes. When you give God 10%, it is symbolic. God, you, you own all my money. You don't, uh, it got quiet right there. Listen to them crickets. Uh, it represents that this 10%, it really stands for everything that I own. So, Daniel says, I only need 10 days to prove my point. And at the end of 10 days, they're not equal. They're not as good as, but they are better than. They are superior. They rise above. They outmaneuver. They outmatch. You didn't hear what I said. They think better than the world thinks. They can figure better than the world can figure. They can last longer. They got more stamina. They got more endurance. Do you hear what I'm telling you? The devil wants you to get drunk on the spirit of the age that says when you got saved, you took the downhill course. And when you got saved, you gave up. You forfeited all of your advantage. I want to tell you you're a fool for thinking that way. The best thing I ever did was 
must make him Lord and Savior of my life. Because now that he is king, now that he is Lord, guess what? I am not at the bottom of the barrel, but I am at the top of the heap. And now no weapon formed against me can prosper. no restraint but now when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against somebody say the best thing I did was get saved so 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 it proves out in Daniel chapter 2 watch this Nebuchadnezzar has a dream the dream is so disturbing until he wakes out of the dream Problem is, he can't remember what he dreamed. So he calls, watch out, he calls for his assistant. He calls for his soothsayer, magician, astrologer, fortune teller. And he says to them, I had a dream. I want you to tell me the dream and the interpretation of it. At that moment, the magician the astrologers, the soothsayers realize our system has limitations. And we cannot tell you what you dream. Nobody can tell you what you dream. Now, he's really testing them, too, because he said, you can make up an interpretation. But if you are, if you are good enough to tell me what I dream, then I'll believe your interpretation. And when they realize that their system is restricted and it doesn't work, he gets mad and has them all killed. Watch this. And part of this onslaught carries over to his wise men, huh, four of them, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And word comes that they're going to be terminated. And Daniel says, what's the problem? And they say, wait a minute. You, if you cannot give us his dream and interpretation, you're going to be killed. Daniel said, I'm part of a system that will other systems fail. Oh, God, if you get me. Other systems drop the ball. Other systems max out and hit a ceiling. But I'm part of a system that if I need to know it, God will reveal it. If I need to do it, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Ah, are you catching this? Oh, one of the best sermons I believe God's ever helped me to preach. Look here. And he dreams of this golden image. Well, not just gold. There's gold and there's silver. And then there's, there's clay. And then there's brass. And it is picturesque. It is a summary or a synopsis of kingdoms that come. Let me, let me break it down. Nebuchadnezzar, he's the, the, the head of gold. He is going to be replaced in chapter 5 by the Medes and the Persians, which is the silver torso. Then those from the Medes and the Persian Empire will be replaced by the thighs and loins of brass, that's the Greeks, which will be replaced by the legs of iron, that's Rome. You can't see it, but there's ten toes. That's the ten European common market nations that according to Daniel, there's going to be a stone cut out of the side of a mountain that's going to crush them. He's going to set up a kingdom. He's, yeah, he's going to be large and in charge. Yeah, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and forever. Ah, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I'm telling you, we might not be doing much right now, but this game ain't over yet. If you'll stay in the system, oh my God, it's all going to come our way. Are you getting this? So now at the end of this interpretation, Daniel and his buddies, they're all promoted, but it ain't over. You go into Daniel chapter 3. Next slide. And there is another image. You see, I'm setting, I'm setting the tone. This is Daniel's or Nebuchadnezzar's image. Nebuchadnezzar makes an image of gold and sets it up in front of the people. 
It's an image of himself. It's not enough for him to have the smartest and the brightest. He wants to be worshipped. And he says on the dedication day, I, I require, expect everyone in my kingdom to bow before my image. And the music starts to play and everybody in his system bows. Are you here? But there are four guys, in particular three, that stand out in Daniel 3, yeah? Yeah, you know them, the three Hebrew boys that say we are not trading systems. We don't bow. He said, well, if you don't bow, then you're going to burn. They said, burn us if you think you can. But we in a system that if we stay in it, you can't burn us. Ah, they, he, and then he tries the tactic of intimidation. He says, you know that furnace, boys? That furnace that melted down all that gold? He said, I still got it, and it's still active. He said, in fact, I want them to turn the heat up seven times, hotter than it was required to melt down the gold. He said, boys, I'm taking away all the peer pressure. Ain't nobody here but just you, me, and the band. And I want them to play another round on the instruments, and if you bow, I'm going to let you go. But if not, who is the God that can deliver you out of my hand? My God. And then the spokesman said, hey, turn up the furnace if you want to. Hey, you know you got to have an attitude where you tell the devil, turn it up seven times, turn it up 70 times, turn it up 700 times, bring seven times more hell, bring seven times more trouble, bring seven times more heartache. I'm not going to bow. I'd rather burn than to bow to your image. Tell somebody, ain't no bow in me. They heated up the furnace, and it was so hot until when they tried to throw them in, those that threw them in got killed. You know what that tells me? The worldly system can't take the heat. Come on, y'all. That's pretty good stuff right there. They can't take the heat. They're in a system that's going to fold up like a $10 suit. Huh. Come on, hear me. But, but we are part of a system. They've been trying to burn us for a couple hundred years. And guess what? He kept coming down, taking burn out of the fire. They tried to drown us, and we walked on the water. Yeah, you didn't hear me. They tried to boil us in oil, but they couldn't boil us. Ha! <laughs> you know why? Greater was he that was in us than he that was in We took a licking and kept on ticking. Devil, you might cut one of us down, but two of us will rise up in my place. Tell somebody, ain't no stopping us. So they get thrown into the fire. But they kept faithful to the system. And Nebuchadnezzar looks in. He wants to see these guys burn up. And he says, uh oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then he starts counting. One, two, three, four. Huh, can't be right. One, two, three, four. Wait a minute. And then he starts rearranging. Four, three, two, one. One, two, four, three. One, three, two, four. And every way he, he, he added it, he came out with four. He said, you know what? There's something different about that fourth man. His head and his hair white like wool. His eyes like flames of fire. His feet like brass that burned in the furnace. Out of his voice sounds like uh, many waters. He said, the fourth is likened to the Son of God. You know what? Three went in. Three came out. Where'd that fourth man go? T Tim Hill said he's still in the fire, and he's walking through the flame. He'll be there to help you when you call upon his name. You know why he's still in the fire? He knew that some of you would be thrown in there. And he said, I promise that I wouldn't leave them when time got tough. He said, when they walk through the water, I'll be with you. When you go through the river, it will not overflow you. You'll go through the fire, but you shall not be burned because you stayed faithful to the sister. High five somebody and say, stay faithful to the system. And they come out. They didn't even smell like smoke. No hair, sing. And watch what the king does. He changes systems. I 
told you this morning, you compromise, you ain't going to win anybody. But if you'll stay faithful, they will come over to our way of thinking. I'm going to preach all night, but go ahead and say, I got pillows in the back if you need them. Now the king makes a decree. He says, if you don't serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we'll kill you. And turn your houses into dung hills because there is no God that can deliver like their God. Oh, the reason you're in this mess right now is so the world will realize ain't no God can deliver like your God. Ain't no God can heal like your God. Ain't no God that can preserve you like our God. Somebody shout yes. Oh, so here, through, through three chapters, we're seeing the combative nature between Babylon and Judah. The conflict, the co confrontation between the systems of the world and the system of God. Nebuchadnezzar is king of Babylon. And even all, all the way through the scripture, from Genesis all the way through. Watch, let me show you. Because, because Babylon starts at Babel. Next screen. Bab means gate. Elel means God they said we're going to make a name for ourselves we're going to make a name for our system we're going to build a city we're going to build a tower that reaches to the heavens and Babel means the gate of God okay God said you don't be kicking in my gate so God says I'll give you another kind of Babel blah 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 come on come on you, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna talk nonsense and the brick maker ain't going to understand what the brick mason is calling for. Because God said, wait a minute. He said, you're not going to put your system up above my system. And it goes on, it goes on. It goes all the way until you see Achan take the Babylonian garment. Come on. Because he didn't want God to look good. He wanted to look good. So, so watch. The Babylonian system says that we look better than the system of God. Come on. The people of God, children of Israel, they spend 400 years in Egyptian captivity, Egyptian bondage. Watch. It is primarily physical, right? Their life is filled with, with rigor and hard bondage. They got a taskmaster that tells them when to get up, when to be on the job, what to eat, come on, what to drink, when to go home, when to go to bed and makes their life tough and they're eating leeks and herbs, garlic and onions. And it was primarily physical. Come on, come on, come on. For 400 years. But it is within uh, every being to want to be free. Come on, I know that you got your little parrot or parakeet in the cage. If you don't clip that joker's wings and he finds that cage door open, he gonna go. I, I know your dog loves you, but don't leave the gate open. Don't, 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 don't lay down the leash and the chain because he gone. He really want to be free. You get it, free Willie? Okay. Because it, it is in everything to want to be free. And the people of God for 400 years say, we don't want to be here. We want to be free. But guess what? Every time they, they thought about being free, they started killing killing, exterminating. Come on. Yeah. So here comes Moses. Moses is a system breaker. Yes. And I won't re-preach it. But Moses brings them out. Because hell's no is no match for God yet. And the devil can't keep me where God don't want me. So they come out. But now, now go back to the previous screen if you would, Sister Michelle. Now, many years have elapsed. Okay? And now there's the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Israel is divided. The, the ten tribes of the north, that's Israel. The two tribes of the south is Judah. Nebuchadnezzar has come, and he has gone into Judah, and he has brought out the brightest, most intelligent, and he has taken them into Babylonian captivity, not Egyptian bondage. Babylonian captivity is different because Egyptian bondage is physical. Babylonian captivity is mental because while Nebuchadnezzar, listen, while Nebuchadnezzar lords over them, they're not eating 
leeks and herbs, garlic and onions. What, what, what are they eating? They're eating steak and ale. Come on. He's fattening them up. He gives them freedom to start businesses, have income. He lets them prosper. They build houses. They are successful. And he attributes their success to his system. Stay with me. Oh, God have mercy. So now, now they are going back to Jerusalem. And a lot of them don't want to go. It's not that they can't go. But they know that Jerusalem has no gates and no walls. Nebuchadnezzar has brainwashed them and told them, you got it better under my system than if you go back to God's system. And there were a lot of God's people that chose to live in a Babylonian captivity than to step back into the system of Almighty God. It was a mindset. It was an attitude that many of you have bought that the world has the best. The world's got the smartest. That the world is getting higher while the church is sinking deep. Oh, help me, Jesus. And you have listened to the lie of the devil, but I have come tonight to break your system. mean any disrespect but I didn't come tonight to be no boy scout and help little old ladies cross the road I come tonight to break you out of some systems I come tonight to get up in your head I come tonight to get up in your face and tell you you're better than this I come to tell you that you don't have to succumb and live second rate you don't have to succumb and be settled, settled for second best I come to tell you that we are not average we are not so so we are not pedestrian no 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 the devil is a liar. We are the best game in town, baby. Listen to what I'm telling you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And if you want to push me into a corner, I'll go ahead and tell you, yeah, we are better. I didn't say God loves us more. I said we're better because we got a God that is for us. And if God be for us, you can't bring anything that can stand in our way. I don't just have joy. I've got joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. I don't just have peace. I've got peace that passes all understanding. I don't have to stay here. I go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And the latter shall be greater. And the end of the thing better than the beginning of it. Somebody shout yes. time to change the mindset the Babylonian mindset you see the world is not seeing the best of us now I'm going to lose some of you for the next little while but that's okay I'll get you back before I let you leave <laughs> they are seeing the saddest most depressed most worried, most troubled people in the world in our churches. Maybe I should have started with that. Because I sure took the air out of the room, didn't I? That's the system that we are living under. They never hear us talk about winning. We just talk about losing. We don't ever talk about succeeding. We're always talking about failing. Never talk about where we got it right. Always talking about where we got it wrong. Man, y'all went from Pentecostal to Episcopalian quick. Help me, y'all. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all lost your amen and your shout quick. Look, you invite them to church, and then you turn right around and talk about it. It's so hard serving Jesus. Well, they got enough in their life. But I listen to Christians grumble about how hard it is. Come on now. Come on, I got some bush shaking in me before we leave here tonight. So you might well just button up and 
buckle up and hang on. Hang on, Elpho. Here we go. I hope you put some polity in it on tonight because I'm going I'm to shake your false teeth right out your mouth. I'm going to shake you tonight. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking tonight, baby. I am shaking for all I got. Look, look. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. You act like serving God is serving the devil. I just can't hardly make it. The devil's been riding me all day. Well, take the saddle off. Uh, come on. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Look here. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Ah, listen to what Jesus said. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I, he didn't say I don't have no burden, don't have no yoke. He said, but it's a whole lot easier than what the devil going to put on you. But we walk around, we, don't, we can't hardly get our chin off our chest. We, we don't smile hardly between Sundays. Come on. I ain't got a smile out of some of y'all yet. I'm working hard. Look how I sweated up trying to get you to get happy. Huh. Huh. The church, the church. We, we are avoided like the plague. Give me the next screen. No way. Uh-uh. Ain't coming. No. They came the Sunday after 9-11, but they ain't been back in 13 years. You know what? Here's my question. Why, why don't they want to have nothing to do with us? Because, listen, I know the sin issue. They don't want to let, let loose, let go. I know all that. But I'm, not, I'm, I'm dealing with a, a system. Because when they look at their system that is predicated on winning, and then they look in the church system, and we're a bunch of losers. Nobody wants to get off the winning team and on the losing team. Nobody says, I want the losers to draft me. Nobody wants to play on the losing team. Well, nobody, I want a pastor, bless God. Let me just throw that out there. I want, I want, I want to be on the winning team. But we have this air about us that we are losing. We're not losing. We are winning. I didn't say whining. I said winning. Tell three people, we're winning this thing. We're winning this. And the world knows we're, we're going to win in the end. And the world knows they have to admit, you know what? We know, we know they, they, they know the truth. And listen to my, listen to my reasoning behind it. Because they still spend money that says, in God we trust. They still have one nation under God in the pledge. Huh? And guess what? They know we are, we're serving a, a true God because just let their kids get sick. They come running right to us. Huh? You let them lose their job. I, they, hey, they might have been taking the name of the Lord in vain yesterday. They lose their job. They're coming for prayer today. So they know we serve a mighty God, but yet when they see when they see what's going on in our life, it does not equate. And listen, listen, they have labeled us as lazy. Please, church, help me. You did run well. Who did hinder you? You were praising so good. The world looks up, looks at us as being incapable, insufficient, a bunch of simpletons, a bunch of hillbillies. I don't mean that with any disrespect, but they, they look at the church. You say people are too dumb to come in out of the rain. Now, that's what they think. They won't tell you that. But they look at us as though you people, you, you're, you're, you're just a mess. Emo you need to be on Dr. Phil. You need pain medication, you need sedatives, you need tranquilizers, you need nerve pills, you don't know how to cope, and yet you talk about a God that moves heaven and earth, and yet look at the mess, look at the condition that you're in. They think that we are the dregs of humanity. They think that we are backward. They think that we are illiterate. They think we're broke, busted, disgusted, sad, mad, looking bad, toe up from the floor up. I had to throw it in there. That's the, that's the mindset. Here, give me the next screen. They have been blinded to what the church ought to really be. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 12. 
He quotes Isaiah. He said that they have been blinded in their minds and hardened in their hearts lest they should see and understand and be converted. Paul put it like this. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that would believe lest they see the image of God. Jesus is the image of the Father, but I ought to be the image of Jesus. And we are reflecting a poor, pathetic image of Jesus. Depressed, defeated, discouraged, disgusted, dysfunctional. You're making Jesus look bad. Get victory. Grow up. Whip the devil. Put him where he belongs. Under your feet. Anybody hear me? Look at how Jesus was meek and lowly. Keep on reading. Keep on reading. I know it was meek and lowly, but you didn't mess with Jesus. I'm tired of the, in the 60s, they, they painted Jesus looking like a high hippie. Made Jesus look like some sissy, some sweet thing. Jesus was a bad somebody. You didn't mess with my Jesus. He'll flip a table over you in a minute and take a cat and nine tails and whip your behind right out of church. And the only way anybody could take him is he put... He said, as long as I got my hands up, ain't none of y'all can touch me. He said, Pilate, he said, I've got authority. I could call 12 legions of angels. He said, the only way you take me is if I surrender. Because if you fight me, you don't have enough power to overtake me. My God, I can't preach much better. Is this good? And when he spoke, he didn't hear. I'm a father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. When he spoke, demons trembled. Hell broke out in hives. Dead men got up and lived. Waves laid down, slain in the spirit. Never a man speak like this man. He didn't speak as the scribes or the Pharisees, but as one that had authority. That's my captain. That's my commander-in-chief. That's who I've got to imitate. Let me show you four things quick. Well, maybe not quick, but I'll... These are four systems that's got to change. This is what the world... Now, I'm preaching from the world's perspective. This is the world's perspective of us. That when they look into the church, and we've got to change the system, they see us as a bunch of fakes and fiends. Crooks and cons. Gospel get-overs. Preachers ain't wanting to do nothing but take grannies, Social Security. That's what they think about us. Now, I know you've got some Christian organizations that make some good movies, okay? I ain't knocking them. But if the world ever makes a movie about the church, especially us preachers, they make us look one of two ways. Either they make us look like we're a bunch of clumsy, discombobulated, can't chew gum and walk at the same time. Huh? Or they make us look like we all sleeping with the church secretary. and robbing the church blind. It's a double standard because they all right with their Oprah being successful. But they don't want preachers to be successful. They all right with LeBron making money. But you better stay on welfare and stay in the project because if you ever make any money, 
is because you church people are cheating. Hey, what's wrong with being spiritual and successful? I want to tell you God has a success system. And if I seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, God knows how to bless me for it. I'm going to throw this out here and let y'all wing it out. You wouldn't go to a surgeon that drove a rust bucket. Huh? You wouldn't know you wouldn't either. You wouldn't go to a surgeon. You, where's, where's, the, where's the surgeon park? Right there he is. He's got big old rusted fenders, duct tape all over the hood. You'd say, oh, my God. That man don't know what he's doing. He, ain't nobody been, been in his operating room. So why do you want why do you want to go to a church that don't know how to be successful? I say take me to a church that knows how to get up and get out and get on with life. I don't want to go to a church where, where people don't know how to be a success. I want to be in a church that knows how to win some battles, that knows how to tread on serpents and scorpions and have power over all the power of the devil. And make a dollar every now and then. All right, number two, number two. They see us as fruits and flakes. Bunch of goof-offs, lazy. You know, there was a day when they wanted to hire a Christian because they knew, they knew Christians going to work. They could trust Christians. You know, you know, Potiphar trusted Joseph so much until he gave him the keys, man, to the house. But now, if they find out you're a Christian, oh, God, don't, don't let them nuts get in here. They'll rob you in the middle of the night. You got to stand over their shoulder. They'll goof off on you. They'll, they'll, they'll compromise, cut corners, and they'll turn a, a one-hour lunch into a three-hour. Oh, you don't want me to preach. They don't have a work ethic. Come on, church. They'll use their spirituality as an excuse not to clock in. Where were you yesterday? I felt led to pray. You didn't come to work because you felt led to pray? Well, guess what? You better pray your next paycheck in because I ain't hiring you. See ya. I lost you now, didn't I? Huh? huh? They, they see us as people that don't know how to, how to spend wisely, don't know how to invest wisely. Come on. Look, look, look at, at Genesis 49, verse 20. Jacob blesses Asher, and he says, You'll produce fruit fit for kings. That's how the church ought to operate, in a spirit of excellence. Come on. The Bible said David played skillfully. Huh. Jesus said, You are a city set on a hill. You know what? That means you got to look up to see us. The problem is the world looks down on us. Huh. Because we don't understand punctuality. We come in late, last, and lost. Come on, hair sticking up. Look like we got dressed in the closet. Ain't brushed the teeth in three days. Yeah, I'm here to work. Let me run your business. I can be promoted. Oh, come, come on. I'm telling you, that's a poor representation. No, don't you know that punctuality is the treasure of princes? When we show up, we don't show up last minute. We get there. We are prepared. Come on. We are people of planning. And if you sing at the praising place, by God, you will practice. We ain't nobody's guinea pig. You don't practice on us. You practice at home because you bring your A game every time you minister in the house of God. Come on, give me a fist bump. Come on, yeah, come on, come on, come on. You know why they don't want to hire you? Because that, that's why. Because you're so heavenly minded, you ain't no earthly good. Okay. Here we go. Now, now stay with me. Ain't got but two more. And don't get around them church people because they're a bunch of faded. Bunch of faded. Don't judge me till I finish my point. There are some of us, we are just prophets of doom and gloom. Into the world. Oh, help me. I'm over here too long. Well, I might as well. Are you ready to get good and mad? Well, ready or not, here we go. The devil's taking over the church. The 
devil's taking over the world. Let me tell you something. The earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. The devil has never called the shot. He has never been in charge, and he ain't in charge of nothing right now. Did you hear what I said? Things that are happening now are things that God was well aware of, and God is not surprised by any of it. And God has a way of escape for the children of God. And if it is dark in Egypt, make sure it will be light in Goshen because God knows what's going on. I know what some of you think. Well, we ain't preaching on the right track. I preach on the right track. I preach on hell. Hell is hot and sinners go there. No purgatory, no limbo. Come on, there is a hell, just like there is a heaven. I preach on all that. And I preach that man shall give an account of himself to God. Knowing the terror of the Lord, the Bible said we persuade men. But we act as though we are scared to death. We see stuff that's going on in the Middle East. And the church, oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 my God, this ain't the end of the thing. This is the beginning of the thing. My God, don't you know when I see that stuff, I don't, I don't go get me beanie weenies and bottle water. I don't climb up under the bed. I lift up my head because I know my redemption draweth nigh. That don't scare me. I'm scared for some of you that's going to be left here, but I ain't scared for me. I am ready. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Scared? Tell your neighbor, I'm ready and I'm not scared. That don't put a spirit of fear on me. Jesus said, My joy I leave with you. Let not your hearts be troubled. I shouldn't trouble you. The world needs to see more out of us than a church. Standing on the fire of escape. Oh, Jesus, hurry up and get us out of here because it's getting so bad we can't make it. I don't care how bad it gets, we're going to make it. I don't care how bad it gets. God is still a way maker for his people. What they need to see is us tarrying until he come. They need to see me winning until he come. They need to see me walking in authority till he comes. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to be over here at the bus stop twiddling my fingers, just waiting on Jesus to hurry up and get me out of here because I can't stand living no more. The devil is a liar. I'm going to live the abundant life until the bus comes to pick me up. The devil is a liar. You can live down and out if you want, but I choose to live up and come in. Can I preach on? Preach. Can I can I show you this? It's amazing some of the old, old the old bad songs we used to sing in church worship. When this life is over, I'll fly away. Like we got like we can't wait for this life to be over. Now I listen, I know, I know, I want to go to heaven as bad as anybody wants to go. But that ain't none of my decision. Until he calls me, I'm gonna live victorious here. Michael, roll your boat ashore. Hallelujah. Don't even know that that was, that was a code song for the Underground Railroad. Telling the slaves, come on up, catch the train on the other side of the Ohio River. And, and we adopted some songs and started singing them. Come on. Come on, help me, Lord. Y'all please look at me and smile. Fake it till you make it. Come on. Come on. Let, let me know. Here, here's, oh, Lord, in the sweet by and by. Listen, here, here's, here's, another, here's another song. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Like you can't rejoice before you get to heaven. I'm telling you, I ain't going to wait till I get to heaven to sing. I ain't going to wait till I get to heaven to shout. I ain't waiting till I get to heaven to win. I plan to win, shout, dance, hip hop, bebop, flip flop, do every bit of it until he calls me a home. You need to get people ready to die. I know, I know, I understand that. It's appointed and a man wants to die and after this the judgment. But look here, I didn't come to the praising place tonight to get ready to die. I got ready to die a long time ago. I come in here to get ready to live. We keep running around telling people, don't die without Jesus. Why don't you tell them, don't live without Jesus? 
Oh, my God, that's better preaching than I'm getting out of here. You need to tell them, don't try to live without Jesus. Because as you live without Jesus, you're just existing. But with Jesus, I have life, and I have it more abundantly. I have joy that the world didn't give to me, and the world can't take it away. Are you ready for one more? Last one. Fail. Fail. They look at us and they say, you're weak, you're wimpy, you're whiny, you lose cannons, you're unstable, you're not ready to be a prime time player. Come on, you will always be an employee and, and, never, and, and never an employer. You will always be a borrower and never a lender. I'm telling you why the world don't want to have nothing to do with church. It's the wrong system. They look at us and say, you'll rent, but you ain't never going home. Huh? They'll look at us and say, you'll till the land, but you'll never own it. The devil is a liar. I'm a land possessor. I'm a territory taker. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to elevate your, your sight tonight. Some of you believe the lie of Nebuchadnezzar. You believe the lie that you're less than because you're a child of God that you don't match up, that you don't qualify. You need to cast down that imagination. We, we have been taught, listen, that, that you ought to be subservient. Let us be in charge. And, and you work for us. We won't ever work for you. You pay us. We'll never pay you. Come on, church. Y'all are mighty quiet in here. Be happy where you're living. Be happy with your position. Be happy with what you got. Jesus never said that. This Bible doesn't teach that. Enlarge your territory. Strengthen your stakes. Come on, that's what this Bible teaches. Because you will break out on the left hand and on the right. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, pressed down, shaken together, running over. A God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. We Listen. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 20, in all matters we were better. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3, Daniel was preferred, listen, above the presidents and princes because of a spirit of excellence. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. He said, this man's got something on him that my people don't have on them. And he has such a spirit of success. He has such a spirit of leadership until I'm going to promote him. We do not have the spirit of failure on us. We have got the spirit to excel and succeed. You should never be intimidated by the worldly system because I'm your cheerleader tonight. If anybody can make it, you're going to make it. If anybody can do it, you're going to do it. If anybody can win, you are destined to win. By this shall I know you favor me. You have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies, even my foes, come to eat my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though a host rise up against me in this, will I be confident? I'm trying to tell you that you can be saved tonight broke. You can be saved tonight sick. You can be saved tonight an alcoholic. You can be saved tonight a drug addict. But guess what? He loves you too much to leave you where he found you. God can change your life. Listen, I appreciate Mission on the Streets and Operation Compassion. And if you go out of here and contradict my message, then I'm going to have, a, have to have a little talk with you. I don't care if you're homeless, you can come to this church. I don't care if you're jobless, you can come to this church. I don't care if you smell like alcohol hall and you're a mix, you can come to this church. I preach a come as you are gospel, but I will not preach a stay as you are gospel. I'm telling you, your ladder shall be greater. And what is impossible with man is possible with God. Somebody shout, I'm better than this. I got some more in me. I said, you tell them they can believe, but many are believing wrong. Well, I believe.
believe it's all right to social drink when you believe in wrong. There you go. You want me to pastor you? I believe it's all right to, to live together without being married. You can believe that if you want to, but you believe in wrong. Boy, boy, I've depressed myself. Having a look at y'all right now, you got me depressed. I believe it's all right for man to marry man. Woman. You can believe what you want to, but you believe in wrong. I believe you're born that way. You can believe what you want to believe, but you are believing wrong. And God said, you tell them that they are believing that they are made in the world's image. God said, you tell them they're believing wrong. You are not what the world says you are. You are what God says you are. You are made in His image. And I got news for you. My God don't lose. I said, my God don't lose. You ought to know God don't lose. You're saved, ain't you? Don't you know the greatest battle that ever ensued? was the battle over your soul? Don't you know the devil didn't want to give you up? Huh? He fought tooth and nail to hold on to you. But you're saved, ain't you? Well, three of you are. I said you're saved, ain't you? Don't you know if God could win that battle for you, that God can win all of the battles for you? Our God don't lose. Say it with me. Our God don't lose. I love Daniel chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. He said, your wise men may not know. Your astrologers may not know. They may not have an answer, but our God has an answer. Our God has a way to win when it don't look like there's a way possible. Our God has a way to get your bills paid when you can't figure the way. Our God has a way. Somebody shout, our God doesn't lose. Some, some of you need to hear it. I'm going to say this and I'm going to close. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. It did not say some things. It did not say pretty things. It did not say pleasing things. It said all things, frustrating things, aggravating things, heartbreaking things, gut-wrenching things, nauseating things, nail-biting things. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So before I close, God said, ask them two questions. He said, ask them number one. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So God said, ask them two things. Do you love the Lord? I don't hear you. Do you love the Lord? Huh? Okay. That's good. Number two, are you called according to His purpose? Then if you love the Lord, and if you are called according to His purpose, then God's working for you right now. See, some of you, you got the wrong mentality. God is not working against you. God is working for say, you, you need to change it right now. The devil is working against you, but God is working for you. And the devil has never had a plan, a plot. He has never had a device that God could not overcome. I want you to stand up right now and say, I got to win. I got to win. I got to win. Because the Bible said I overcome by the blood of the... It don't matter what comes my way. I overcome it. I am more than a conqueror. Through him that loves me, I am better than this. Rebuke that spirit of failure off of you right now. I rebuke that spirit of defeatism off of you right now. Nobody will ever love me. Nobody will ever hire me. I can't never be used by God. You need to shake that foolishness out of your mind right now. Did you hear me? I said you need to shake it out of your head right now. I'm looking for people that will change your mentality. And instead of going into it saying, I can't win, you need to go into it saying, I can't lose. Tell your neighbor, I can't lose. I know some of you, some of you from where you are right now, it don't look like you can win. You don't look like you can win. But it ain't over. In the end, you win. Look at me. I'm going to say this.
this and I'm done. You're going to pray right along. The fight is still. The outcome has already been determined. I don't mind fighting when I know the outcome is already this. My hand raised in faith. Why don't you try it right now? See, I can tell some of you ain't won in so long because you don't know how to get your hand up. You, you put, no, get it up like a winner. Get it up, get it, get it, get it up. Now, I want you to shout, I will win. I'm going to tell you all right now, based on, your, based on your response right there, I wouldn't want to get on the gridiron with none of you because you don't sound like you're ready to go to war. It don't sound like you're ready to fight. I'll win. I, you don't sound too confident. I said, you don't sound too sure of this thing. Because, listen to me, just because you have had some setbacks doesn't mean that the game is over. God have mercy. Just because you've had some bad days don't mean that your life is over. I come to tell you, it is a setup that in the end it's going to speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. Throw your hand up like a winner and shout, I win! what you need to do. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You need to walk around right now. Judah, get on up here. You need to walk around right now and shake somebody's hand and say, you're going to win. You're going to win. Shake their hand. Shake it with some conviction. Shake it with some conviction. Prophesy. Speak it to them. Get out of your seat and tell somebody, you're going to win. You're better than this. 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 This ain't all there is to you. You are better than this. Ah, oh, yes, I feel shouting. I feel dancing. I feel leaping. I feel spinning. I feel victory in the house. Somebody shout, I'm better than this. I want you to join me right now. Come on, I'm not going to prolong it. But I want all the winners up here right now. Come on, all the winners. Come on, dance up here, run up here, jump up here. Come on, all the winners. Come on, join us for a minute. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, yeah, you're winning. You're winning. Get your head up. Put a smile on your face. Get your dance back. Get your swag on. Come on. Come on. You're winning. Come on. Come on, you're winning. There you go. Come on, son. Smile like a winner. 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 Wait a minute. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. I'm going to tell you what. Now, this is going to sound crazy. Wait a minute. Quit clapping. You won't hear me say that much, will you? But quit clapping just a second. You know what God just put in my spirit? He said some of them get more excited over a parking space close to the front than they do about me winning their battles for them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, the most excited you ought to be is when you come to church and hear the man of God tell you that no matter what the weapon is, it will not prosper. That you will rise above it. That you will endure it. That you are a champion. Now begin to praise him like a winner. I am a winner. I am victorious. I can do all things. Yes, I can. Come on. I am trying. This is our party tonight. I said this is our party tonight. It's our time to dance. It's our time to shout. It's our time to celebrate. Come on, church. Let it get down in your belly. Champion. I once was proud, but now I'm free. I'm a champion. Oh, I've overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Come 
I'll praise him again. I celebrate your victory tonight. I said I celebrate your victory. I celebrate your victory with you. I celebrate your overcoming. I celebrate you rising above. I celebrate your promotion. I celebrate your success. I celebrate your healing. A champion lives within me. He's given me authority. I'm more Come on. Strong. Come on. Get some attitude I'm when you pray. Get some attitude when you pray. within me. He's given me authority. I'm more I'm strong. I'm over from by the blood of the Lamb. A champion lives within me. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. See a champion lives within me. He's given me authority. I'm more, I'm strong. Hallelujah. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. God said, tell him about Caleb. Caleb, when he was 40 years old, was promised a mountain. Now, 45 years later, he goes back to Joshua. He said, I got a promise 45 years ago. He said, I can't die till I got my mountain. I wish you'd tell somebody, I can't die till I win. I refuse to die till I win. I refuse to check out till I win. My hand will be raised in victory. you to shout devil give me my mountain I'm tired of looking at it I'm tired of walking around it I'm tired of dreaming over it I'm ready to put my feet on my promise I'm ready to possess what God has destined for me devil you might as well turn it loose cause I'm not giving up till you do it's mine and I claim it I claim it I claim it I claim it I feel it I feel it you better get ready to run you better get ready to shout I feel victory Sing it! I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. A champion lives within me. He's given me authority. I'm all. Go ahead, Dad. You deserve it. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Go ahead, shout. You deserve it. A champion lives within me. He's given me authority. I'm all. I'm strong. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, sing it. I'm overcome, I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, sing it. I'm overcome. I'm overcome, I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. For I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Tell your neighbor, it don't matter that it might get worse before it gets better. I'm holding on to it'll get better. You can look at it getting worse if you want to, but I'm looking at it'll get better. Somebody shout, it's going to get better. Shout, it's going to get better because God is calling the shots. I'm God's 
servant and God will do me nothing but good. But I don't ever like to see anybody shout by himself. Somebody shout with her. God, I feel a breakout anointing. I feel a breakthrough anointing. Kalababo Shakaya. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Get your victory in the name of Jesus. Run, run, run. Shout, dance, return. stooped over like you a whip puppy like you done lost your best friend uh, nobody knows the trouble I see oh I'm tired of living under the circumstances well get out from under them listen at least one night somebody say at least one night at least one night I want everybody under my I want your head up. I want you to pull your shoulders back. We ain't talking about being cocky. We're talking about being confident. I want you to walk out of here like devil. You are a fool if you get in my way tonight. You might catch me on another day, but don't try me today. Because tonight, I got the victory. I, you, don't you go home and toss and turn, walk the floor, bite your nails, wring your hand. Not tonight, not after this word, not after this anointing. You go home, huh? You climb up in your bed and you sleep the sleep of the just knowing that you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus that you're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh ah, I want you to walk out of here knowing that it's alright that it's alright somebody say it's alright it's alright come on hold your head up Hold your head up. Square your shoulders. My Lord. Walk around with some confidence right now. Come on, just look at somebody. I need to teach y'all how to look like you got some swag. You want me to look Italian? You want me to let my DNA take over? Yeah, you don't want you don't want me to get the every once in a while you gotta look at your situation and say, I'm not intimidated by you. Who do you think you're messing with? You bopped up the wrong tree, devil. You might get wishy washy so and so down the road that don't know how to half pray and ain't got no praise for once every six months. But baby, whether the Lord gives or whether the Lord takes away, I gotta pray. And 
I ain't selling out and giving up. I'm a winner. Somebody shout, I'm a winner. You know what? If you ain't got it by now, you ain't getting it. That's all I can tell you. Because such a word and such a freedom. If you ain't got it now, ain't nothing I can do to help you. How many of you say, I got it? I got it. Come on, let me hear you shout, I got mine. I got mine. Did you raise your hand? Because I'll get yours too. Okay, I'm making sure because I, 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 yeah, I'll get all it. You don't want to leave it on the pew. I'll clean it up right after church and I'll take all y'all's victory. Father, I pray for your people. I know I've delivered the word to them. I felt the freedom to push them, to challenge them. Father, now, now, they are going to be doers of this word and not hearers only. They're going to go out of here tonight and I know they're going to be tested and they're going to be tried. But devil, we're going to hold fast to the word. We're going to win and overcome. You go into the job tomorrow. I want your boss to look at you and say, what happened to you over the weekend? Now, they probably think you're going to say, well, I got, I, I got me a new boyfriend or, or, or you know, I, I found a deal on this, on this car or, or, Lord, I don't remember a thing because I was drunk or, or how. No, I want you to look at them and I want you to tell them, my pastor told me who I was in God. And I'm walking in it. And if you can't take it, too bad. Huh? If you, I, I am somebody. And you ain't going to make me feel any less than what God's already told me I was. Give the Lord another praise. Hey. Brother Ron Taylor, come on up. Looking at me like who? Well, we ain't got but one Ron Taylor in this house. This is our ministry leader. I want you to take this microphone and tell them about what's going on Saturday. And this ain't for old men. This is for all men. And then I want you to pray us out. I will do that. All right, men. Let me hear a hallelujah first. One more. Hallelujah. I need it bigger than that. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Saturday, 7 o'clock. Be here at the church. We're going to go to Reedy Creek Park and do some fishing. Now, we're going to start off with some devotional and prayer. And then we're going to get excited out there. And those fish are going to be waiting for us. Now, those that don't have their licenses and you don't know how to fish, you can get some instruction. You can't fish though, so we'll do some hiking. Some can do some kayaking. So we're gonna have a big fun day. So I expect all the men to be there. Now seven o'clock in the morning is when I wanna be here. So be here early, all right? All right then. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful message tonight. We want to thank you for all you've done for us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus and all the services. Lord, we want to thank you for the pastor and all that he's extended to us today and all the energy that he's given us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you continually bless everyone and give them traveling mercies on the way home. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one of us as we go through the work week, as we become new people to our jobs, to our bosses, to our employers. And Lord, we want you to embolden us. We're bold. We're strong. And, Lord, we're going to continue on your way. Order our steps in the name of Jesus. And everybody's saying, amen, amen, amen.